Kat here. Today I'm going to be doing a book review for The Trader Baru Cormorant by Seth Dickinson. This book is amazing and everyone should read it. It is amazing and I loved it and oh my gosh, like as soon as I finished I went online and I was like when is the next one out because I need it. I need it right now and I'm so sad to say but it's not even out yet. So he announced the title and he hasn't announced anything else. But I am so looking forward to it, okay? And so I'm going to tell you why. The Trader Bar Cormorant is shelved as hard fantasy. And I've never really seen that tag before, but it's a fantasy world without magical elements. So it's a like a second realm, I guess. And it, this world is actually set pre-Industrial Revolution. So there aren't any guns. It's swords and spears and poison and explosions and it's basically just fabulous. The main character who you see everything through is Baru Cormorant, and immediately I was like, okay, well, she has the best name I've ever read in my life. So you meet Baru when she's a child, and she lives on an island nation, and she has two fathers and one mother. So on the island nation, you can have many parents of either gender, and she happens to have two fathers and one mother. From the beginning, she's marked as an extremely bright child, then one day, ships come, and they're from the Empire of the Masks. So if you've seen the cover of the book, it has a face with the mask, and it's because the Empire that comes in, is they all wear masks. Immediately, I'm like, wow, that is such a cool idea. I love it. Please tell me more. So what happens is the ships come slowly in as traders. She realizes they're not only there for trading. As a child, she likes to run along the bazaar. People trade there, as well as people from the Empire of Masks. When she approaches one of the stall owners who's from the Empire of Masks, she, over time she becomes quite friendly with him, and he becomes almost a benefactor who protects her against when the Empire of Masks comes in and settles the island. So at first they're just kind of integrating as traders, and then they kind of settle it, and then they make a school, and then they bring a plague. So pretty soon, pretty much the Empire of Masks owns the islands, and they have colonized it. The benefactor, though, recognizes she's extremely smart and sends her to the Empire of Masks school to learn. One of the most important to her development as a child is that there's an inheritance of one parent only for each gender. So everyone should have one mother, one father, no more, no less, and that's the end. And so around that time, her father and her mother goes off to battle in the north, and her father never comes back. And then when she asks her mother, why didn't he come back? Why did they take him? The mother says, it's because they don't like fathers. They don't like uh, homosexuality and they don't like family systems that are more than just two parents. Very early on, Baru realizes that the cost of dealing with the Empire of Masks is extremely high. She realizes as she is as a child on the island, she can do nothing other than perhaps survive a plague. She vows to climb the empire from inside. She will learn all the knowledge she can and gain all the power she can and do anything she can so that she can save her island nation. After that, the novel sweeps into a battle of political intrigue and subtle stepping and political machinations and it's just totally, 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 totally epic. There's about a dozen characters that are introduced and they all have their own motivations which are quite well flushed out. You just see Baru try to navigate and make her way. The whole way through, there's a lot of tension and a lot of maneuvering and the writing is just stunning. One of the most interesting and extremely well written topics in the book was Dickinson's exploration of colonization. What does it cost a country to colonize or to remain independent? What does it cost in blood? What does it cost in money? What does it cost in resources? And then the other way that he looks at it is what does it cost a single person mentally? So what does it cost in their blood, in their tears? What do they have to sacrifice? How far is too far? What are you willing to give up? And the way that he explores it was just so beautiful and he would work in little snippets of things from her past and her own emotions, just like little little one word nuggets and he'd just like place them in there and leave them. And then by the time I got to the end, I was on the edge of my seat, I didn't know what was going to happen and he would just use those little nuggets again to completely destroy my emotions. Like just a sledgehammer to my everything, my feels, like everything. I will definitely say that the tag for lesbian and female-female uh, is definitely there. It is so strong, so well written. I would love 
to recommend this book to everyone. There were like so many things that I was like, I am so intrigued by every every single thing that's happening right now, every single faction that's happening, that I'm not even concerned about the fact that you're just shoving all of this politics in because I'm like really rooting for like all of the different ones. How can you not root for the pirates in the seas and the clay makers and the people who fight like wolves in the woods or the priestesses, you know, or the common people in the city. So each one was so well written that I didn't even notice that I was getting a bunch of politics and then by the end it was just so beautifully done and I highly, highly recommend this book. I don't know why it's not more popular. I super, super loved it and I highly recommend it. So I recommend this book for anyone that likes hard fantasy, if you like political intrigue, if you like really, really interesting characters and world building, and if you like a lot of mental exploration. I read that Seth Dickinson actually studied neuroscience and it makes complete sense to me because the way he described her mental changes and her mental sacrifices and what she was thinking at each time, it just blew me away. But it is a colonization novel, so of course it's going to be bittersweet. And I highly, highly look forward to his next book. I believe it's called The Monster Baru Cormorant. So, please read this book. Let me know if you have read this book. Let me know if you will read it. And I so highly recommend it. I would love to talk about it with someone. So please read it and please talk to me about it. And once again, it is The Traitor Baru Cormorant by Seth Dickinson. So that's the end of the review. And I hope you have a really happy time reading. See you! Bye!